In this video, we're just about to learn how to quickly conceptually model this table using Rhino and then bring it to Modo to do a quick render. So here is Rhino. I can start in the top by typing box. I want a box from the center and the center of the base should be zero enter. To get the box to be squared you hold shift and then you can drag down. Voila. I can right click to start a new box and this is the piece of wood something like this and move it down. Now as we know in Rhino we have the gumball that we can rotate with but if you want to rotate from here we can type rot, ROT rotate and we want to have a copy so we say copy yes and the center of the rotation is zero enter the second reference you just hold shift and you click then you let it go hold shift again shift again so it's every 45 uh, 90 and right click now I can do box again snap to there and drag it somewhere here and then move it down and then we can do the same thing rotate zero or shift Oops, hold shift, 90, 90, and 90. So now we have something like this. I could move this uh, hair down to get uh, so it looks a bit more interesting, minus 0.01, voila, and this one maybe a hair more, minus 0.03, voila. To bring this into Modo, um, I can select it all, type mesh to convert it to polygons, and because it's very cubic, it has no curve, the 50% is enough. So OK. Now the solid are selected. So we want to go delete. And now we only have the mesh. And now for Modo, you have to save it as a version 5. So now I can save this as version 5. And I'll save it here, coffee table. Voila. We can switch to model, file open, and bring the coffee table. Now it is very tiny as you can tell. So what we can do, uh, and it's inside each of them are inside a group. So to clean this, we can select, so I click one, shift click right click select item in hierarchy so it's select it all right click parent and parent and now i can get rid of all of those empty group empty folder and to size this to scale i can select it all in a model to bring everything to screen it's a or shift a shift a is for the one selected shift a. it's like doing control shift e in, in a rhino center uh, snap and precision absolute scaling and here we can say the longest the length should be one one meter 1.2 m uniform scale so now the coffee table is to scale you can press escape and remove vertices we want to be in object mode uh, 
if we want to group things together there's many way we can hold on control we could go control G or we can right click and go merge mesh it's up to you so it doesn't so it's cleaner um, to rename something you could click here and go black if you want to name items now we want to create a floor so right click primitive plane to scale it's this one it's W E R so scale is R so you press R you can scale it very big like even much bigger and W to move down now we can convert this to an area light right click change type area light and move it up rotate it scale it we can change the the light to a little bit yellow for inside and now to look at it we can go F8 for preview and if you want to know exactly the effect of the area light you can hide it and unhide it and now we can see that it contributes quite a bit the floor is still too low so I could move it here um, position I could go plus 2 mil Voila, better still plus 3 mil now it's good um, we want this to be the same so render camera and render camera so when we do this it follows the environment lighting this like the back is here shading environment so the gray is here so one way we use the gray and we go 1.2 so it's brighter or we go less maybe 0.8 or 0.9 or we can bring uh, what we call a high dynamic range images images an environment an HDR so an images with a lot of contrast and we'll be using this for lighting and reflection we don't need to see it so it's a bit like in SolidWorks so we go F6 and if you have the content installed you can go on the uh, environment and you can go indoor or outdoor uh, so this is like taking an images with bracketing has different exposure or we can use the one from SolidWorks those one so you double click to bring it so now this image take over the, the gray and you can actually see it you see it's on the back you can see the the soft boxes all of this so like I say we don't really want to see it so we can go here and we can say not visible to camera so now this is transparent but it's still visible to lighting and reflection and very often with those type of light you have to dim them a bit so maybe 0.7 if you want the backlight to be in the front or vice versa you go into the light the images and it's rotation on Y so that will rotate the high the, the environment so that's how you can uh, move the reflection or where the strongest light is um, to make those uh, rectangle black we select them M for mask black we can also do it here say OK OK so now they should turn black now we want the edges to be nice so we click here to see it and on the, the first page here we can put uh, 5 mil or 4 mil for the rounded edges all of this get rounded now we can do the same for those guy so we select them the wood M call that wood 
and you can go online and download uh, an image, a texture map of wood, and you go add image, load image. And I was using this one, I think. So now we can see the wood here. And it might not be applied well. It's not. So to change this, you go here, UV, and instead of texture, texture UV. That's the coordinate from Rhino. And now you can see the wood. You can also do the uh, fillet. So go here and uh, do the formula so it looks better around it fillet the wood here is the wrong direction so what you can do it's uh, select those two go in uv and uh, you could just rotate e and rotate them you might have to do this for the all of them q to drop now you select the next one, you remove polygon, select the one you want, so this one, polygon, those two, and then e. we could have done all of them at once, but just to show you. And we can put it elsewhere so they don't look the same. Uh, and you know, keep on going. Go back to model. Uh, now what we can do, find an interesting angle like this and um, on the final color output you can do a vignette that would darken these edges maybe 150 you see it's a bit darker here we can remove a bit of the saturation so that would be tone map between 10 and 20 let's go 10 it's a little bit less saturated and if you wanted some glow we can go blue now there's not really some high contrast but we can try it we'll see that render time now this is good enough to let it render and you can go here and save the image in IO now if you want the final render let's remove the polygon you'll have to go render render or F9. Now for the final render you might want higher settings. It might take longer to render but so to remove noise, shading rate you can go 0.2. Reflection 256 so you get you give it more samples. If you're using glass you should go refraction 256. There is no glass here. And uh, light sample is for the shadow, the noise on the floor 256. So now it will take longer, but it will look much better. So let's find a better angle like that. And go render, render F9. So now as you can tell, it's rendering. So I'll pause the, the movie. So when it's render like this, to, uh, you can compare to a different one. To see it full screen, it's 100%. Uh, I think it's a bit too bright here, but it's all right. We can check the bloom, go higher. That's to make it glow, but in this case, I don't think it's very useful. You see it glows here. Or maybe a hair, like 70. Yeah. Uh, the rest is good, so we'll go save image and we'll save it as a JPEG and we'll call it Untitled 2 and then we can uh, open Photoshop And some quick trick would be to start with level, control L, per channel, so red first, and just trim where there's no data. 
don't touch the contrast, only the end point, start or end. And now you can push it back by going edit fat levels. A little bit. Then we can try auto tone and push it back. Then auto contrast, push it back. and auto color now if we want to see uh, some of this we can go adjustment shadow highlight and then push it back this one usually push a lot back and remove a bit of saturation you would go vibrance remove this and go back here. So if I go 6 here, I would go minus 6 usually, or minus 5. And then you save it as a JPEG. Voila!